last week um she said when she logged in she just discovered after like three five minutes she logged in we we are we're running off that we spent about 10 minutes i said ah, we were trying to save time so that people can if they could you know know us for 10 minutes then they could spare their 10 minutes and trust us with 10 minutes so mm. instead of taking time and but if question and answers and discussions take more than 10 minutes they will understand but, so that's why we yeah. always try to keep to time and then okay. Set, okay. so I don't know if anyone has such um, observation too. So there's no reason why we we are running off early, but we just try to accommodate people who are coming from office, people who are still in office, people. So that's why we try to make it short, 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 snappy. Okay, but so. if question and answer takes um, more than 10 minutes fine is allowed but at least the teaching should you know be that um concise so that they could spare the whatever time they spare they could benefit from it and not get distracted mm. uh, all right so let's continue beware of false messengers nehemiah 6 10 to 14 nehemiah 6 10 to 14 beware of false mm. messengers I believe all of us know who false messengers are, people that come with news that um, are not real, people who come with news or information to swindle you, people who come with news or information to deceive you, to distract, you know, to, to even kill one, to make one fall into a particular trap that has been set for, against such a fellow. So those people are false messengers because they come with false news, false information. And then somebody said, you're as good as the information you have access to. So when you work on information from false messenger, you can be sure the outcome cannot be right. So tonight we'll be taking our reading from Nehemiah 6, 10 to 14. Nehemiah 6, 10 to 14. So afterward, I want you to pay attention to this Bible reading. Afterward, I came unto the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of Mehatabel, who was shut up. And he said, let us meet together in the house of God, within the temple, and let us shut the doors of the temple, for they will come to slay thee. Yea, in the night will they come to slay thee. And I said... Such a man as I as I flee, and who is there that being as I am would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. And lo, I perceived that God had not sent him, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me, for Tobiah and Sambalat had hired him. Therefore, was he hired that I should be afraid and so and do so and sin, and that they might have matter for an evil report that they might reproach me? My God, think thou upon Tobiah and Sabalat according to these their works and on the prophets that would have put me in fear. Praise God. This passage is very instructive. Very, very instructive. Nehemiah came all the way from Babylon to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. He had the go, the go ahead from the king of Babylon. He had prayed to God. He came to start the building and people came to discourage him. Sabalat and Tobiah were one of them. They told him, you can't achieve this. You don't have the resources, both material resources, both human resources. And in fact, you don't even have God back in. And they talked him down. He was dogged and rugged. He said, no, 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 I'm going on. I'm going all the way. Now, while they saw his determination, they still went ahead to cook up fake prophets and prophecy against him to tell him, see, people are coming to assassinate you. You need to run. You need to hide so that they don't get you. And Nehemiah was... How can I go and hide? 
Who am I to hide? Even when I'm not hiding, who am I? Let them come and kill me here. They will come and meet me walking here. Where will I go to? What is my life worth? When Jerusalem lies in ruin, and then he perceived later when things were going on, when he, he, he could read a body language after they noticed he was not going to accept the prophecy as being from God. Then he perceived that these people had come to deceive him. They perceived, he perceived that these people were sent by Tobalat and Sambalat and Tobiah. They were, he was hired, you know, paid to do the bidding of Sambalat and Tobiah. And why? So that he could be afraid and abandon the project. And they can use that against him. That look at if somebody who had, who had mobilized you people, who had sold you the vision, is afraid, is running away. So you people, who are you looking up to? Nobody, because the person whom you are looking up to is afraid and has run away. So everybody would have been discouraged and abandoned the project. That was their aim. And then God, worked miraculously by revealing their plans to Nehemiah. And so Nehemiah was miraculously saved from falling into that trap. So also today, you and I are faced with these messengers. They could be in your church, they could be in your office, in your family, in your neighborhood, in the streets, anywhere, even in the playground, in the park, in the mall, you could meet them. They could sell you products. They could, you know, you don't know what the enemy knows about you because you cannot recognize the enemy. It is only the enemy that knows you as their target. You don't know the enemy until the enemy is revealed to you before you know this is an enemy. Until the enemy is revealed, you don't know him or her. But the enemy knows you because you are the target. So. Everything they do will be to make you fall into the trap they are setting. And those enemies are the ones we are calling false messenger because you see them come with false message. But to you, the messages may not appear to be false. They might look real. They might look um, harmless. They may look, um, um, you know, like the information you wanted to hear. But until the deed is done, before you realize you've been deceived. The betrayal of God and his kingdom by false prophets, teachers, and even brethren is a major challenge to true servants and children of God all over the world. We saw in the Bible a prophet, a senior prophet who deceived the junior prophet God has sent on an errand. He ran towards the junior prophet and said, oh, God has spoken to me now that you should come to my house and eat. Whereas God never did so. The prophet was just jealous. That how can God see me here, abandon me here, go to a far place, send the junior prophet to come and deliver a message in my own land, in my own village, in my own country. And then the junior prophet you know, talked too much by telling me the old prophet the whole secret. God said I should not eat or drink. Okay, God said you should not eat or drink, so I cannot host you. All right. While he was going, the junior prophet, the, no, the, the senior prophet had to run after him. You go and tell him, tell him God has spoken to me and that he can come and refresh himself in my house. And when he had, okay, God said I should go, I can go and refresh, but God has changed his mind. After eating and whining in the house of the senior prophet, God then spoke through that senior prophet that, oh, I told you not to do this, and you have done it in disobedience. Surely you will not get home. So the man was disappointed, so I was deceived. While on his way home, he was killed by a lion who was not hungry, killed him, and stood by him, taking responsibility that I killed him, and I'm not hitting him, to show that it was God at work, not an accident. Because a lion would not kill an animal when he's not hungry. But this lion killed somebody and never did touch the person. And he was sitting down beside the person to show it was not an accident. It was God fulfilling his word. So also, for everybody 
whether you're a prophet, a teacher, you're a brethren, you're a churchgoer, you're a family person, you don't even know God, you they are false messengers looking around you. Even people who want to know God, people who want to discover themselves, people who are asking questions about who is God, who is, what is salvation and all that, they fall prey to the hands of these false messengers because they dish out false doctrine, false teaching, false information. They swindle them and you know, they, 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 they indoctrinate people with false teaching and then they make salvation and knowing God difficult for a lot of people. So we therefore need to be extra careful not to fall into the hands of people who claim to be working for God, but in reality are agents of the devil. So the responsibility to know them lies with you and I. For you to know the agents of the devil, you lie, the responsibility lies with you and I. The Bible tells us in John 10, 10, it said that the thief, the thief comes to steal kill and to destroy. destroy. Yeah. The primary purpose of every false messenger, teacher or prophet, is to carry out the devil's mandate, which is to steal whatever belongs to you or should belong to you, such as your joy, blessings, breakthrough, and every pleasant things that should have been yours. Kill your dreams and aspirations and leave you destroyed, rejected, hopeless, dejected, helpless. How did they achieve this aim of theirs? It's simply through deceits and lies. That's all. Satan deceived Adam and Eve. The same style of deceit is what he uses till today. You can imagine how many thousands of years or millions of years ago he had deceived Adam and Eve. And he's still using that same style. It shows you that that style is potent. That method is a potent method. That scientific or scientists can never have solutions to, because if they should have solutions to, they should have discovered it a long time ago. So for you to identify deceits, for you to identify lies, you need God to reveal to you. That is why it says that there's a spirit in man that bears record, bears witness. You need the Holy Spirit to, to prompt you that don't trust that fellow, don't trust that information. That fellow is not real. This is the fellow. Mm -hmm. Let God reveal such and any everybody to you. Don't look mm -hmm. at people with your naked eyes. Don't judge them by mm -hmm. your by their actions or inaction. You know, so many people we 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 tag them, you know, with wrong tag, probably by just our our, our, our you know mood or the way we see them or perceive them or what we have heard about them but you never allowed God to reveal them to you. Even what the secret things about them, you know, when God reveals to you, you know them more than they know themselves. Even when you tell them about themselves, they wonder how you do. And that is what the word um, we call secret service. You know, they, they employ the service of secret agents to monitor, to get information about you. Your own secret mm. agent is the Holy Spirit, who you are not going to pay any dime and will do more mm. work for you. So they come harmless and look original, giving no clue of suspicion until the deed had been done before you discovered what had befell you, who would not fall into the hands of false messengers in Jesus' name. And Amen. anyone who had fallen into their hands, God will rescue such a fellow in Jesus' name. Amen. A lot of people have fell into wrong hands in, in marriage, either as a man or a woman, you know, deceived and married off like that. When they got into the wedding, to the marriage, they discover they've been deceived. There was some, there was one I discovered last month in the hospital, you know, while my son was admitted in the same, in, a, in an emergency ward, a lady was discovering after some years of marriage that herself and the husband are AS. Whereas she said she that a uh, blood type delayed her from getting married. She knew she was AS. So every man she, that wants to get married with her, once they are AS, no matter how strong the love or bond between them, she always against the marriage that no, 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 I can't risk it. But this guy came along the line when they went for blood test, the guy came presenting AA. 
she never mm. knew it was the guy was an yes. heir. So they had the first born is about seven years. Now their second born is about three years. He has serious crisis. They had to rush him to the hospital. While the hospital was doing all sorts of tests, it was discovered the boy, three year old, is an SS. Oh no. So the girl, the, the woman was like, How come I am AS? The father is AH. It's, it's not possible. He's not a bastard. At least I'm the mother. So I know the father. This is the father. Hey, hey. And they said, Okay, both of you should come. Let's take your blood sample for blood test. And they both turned out to be AS, AS. So now, <laughs> what do you think the man? Will be saying to the woman now apologizing mm. right <laughs> <laughs> definitely <laughs> it's too late so some it's some other late. come with sweet words mm. you would like to hear appealing to your sentiment and emotion and i'm sure that was what happened here so some mm. others come harmed with evil spirits powers even to hypnotize people they come with evil powers, evil spirit, they hypnotize people. So you, you're, you, they will deafen your ears to the right information. All you do is them and them alone. Whatever they say is right. Whatever they ask you to do is what you do. So Act 20, 29 to 30 tells us something. Act 20, 29 to 30. It said, for I know this, that after my departing, shall grievous wolves enter in among you not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. So even among the elect, some people will fall. Some people will come up with false teaching. False teaching and then they come, they come to, to, to take people, pluck their feet out of the right doctrines and then a lot with them they lead a lot astray even those whom you are going out there to win to convince to change there are also people who are going out pretending to be like you pretending to be to be part of you going there to deceive them so it makes the work difficult for them to identify who is real who is original and who is not because you've been mixed with mixed multitude. You've been mixed up with fake, with counterfeit, people who are pretending to be real, who are pretending to know it, people who are pretending to be like you, and then giving out false information. So from the above picture, we see that no one is entirely free or immune from false messengers. As a child of God, and worse off, also for would be children of God, that is sinners. So you're not only child of God or children of God that should be weary of false messengers. Even sinners should be weary of false messengers. Mm -hmm. When you think you're approaching a man of God, when you think this fellow should be a man of God, a woman of God, it could just be a false messenger, a false preacher, a false prophet. Well, that you have to this is wrong. And a lot of such people have been swindled. <laughs> As a child of God, the document, the documented word of God, which is the Bible, and the Holy Spirit should be your saving grace. If you constantly fellowship with God, with the, with, with, with the Holy Spirit, if you meditate on the word of God, you will have a, an headway. You will have a, 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 a headway, a, a, a good head over false prophet. You can always test or ask of about the any information they are giving you from God. Is it true? Is this information from you? If they are giving you any prophecy, you can check it in the line with the word of God. Is the word of God backing that such prophecy? Any prophecy that instill fear into you is not from God. God will never make you afraid because he said to us scripture. And said, fear not. Somebody that told you Fear not, will not put fear into you. So any mm -hmm. prophecy, any message that instill fear into you, that send fear into you, is not from God. You then have to take every of these messages and teachings in line with the word of God. That is what will tell you or teach you what God 
is saying if if it is God that is talking <laughs> or not easier to know that way and then if you have the Holy Spirit then it can prompt you when the person is talking then he bears witness it confirms what mm-hmm. the Father is telling you mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. the truth that is what I've just said so but if if he's not confirming it then it shows that he is not the one saying it praise mm-hmm. God God bless you mm-hmm. So I will, I will round off here so, so that I can entertain your contributions, questions, and all that we have tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. So you have the floor. Questions, contributions. 